Okay, hopefully you're starting to uh, see how these media queries and uh, the different sets of rules that are applied based upon the viewport are starting to work. So at this point we have introduced the basic structure, which is the same for all of the different levels, whether it's the uh, cell phone, the tablet, or the full screen. The structure is the same. We have started to uh, distinguish the presentation by adding the different background colors based upon the size of the viewport. So uh, if it is a mobile layout 480 pixels or below it's reading this background color. If it is a tablet between 481 to 768 pixels it's reading the blue background and if it is greater then um, 769 or minimum width of 769 pixels then it's reading this sort of green color and it's applying that based upon uh, which uh, size of uh, screen is being and this simulates it down here by you clicking on these different things you're able to, to simulate the different screen sizes so that was um, an introduction. Now we got to start getting serious about this, but it's crucial for you to be aware of what context you are working in at any given time in order to make this work. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, lay this site out according to the um, the uh, plan that we had created earlier, the design. And in this mobile, everything is sort of sitting on the right side, one on top of the other, pretty basic. So I'm going to go with that first. Um, and so I'm going to start with that. And oops, turn that back on. So this is a good way to help you to know which uh, section you are working on. So uh, what we haven't talked about yet is some of the different handles and such and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that right now. Uh, rather what I would have you do, I'm going to go ahead and close this and show you. There is a set of videos uh, that have been created by Dreamweaver uh, that will help you to understand how this works. Now these videos, like it shows you top features here, videos, fluids grid videos. This is only available in, in CS6. Um, but if you click on that, that's going to bring you to videos that teach you about how to use the um, the different uh, tools that are available to you um, when you're using this template. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do, though, going back into it, is I'm going to design these uh, to show up. I'm going to, um, this one is just there. I'm going to call it header. I'm going to put a little bit of basic content in there. And I want to change that to a uh, heading level one. We'll just call this uh, responsive prototype test. This is your nav. Um, we'll go ahead and make a link there to home. That's the only page that's going to exist for now. Uh, and I'm going to make that a, whoops, I'm going to make that a an ordered list. Okay, so here is the, the content for the div of left. I'm just going to leave that where it is. Um, it's naturally going to fl flow there. Um, and then this is the center one, but as you recall, this isn't, anchored to the left it's wanting to float up well I don't want that to float up in this design so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tools um, right there you see that arrow it says click to align div with the grid so when I click on that what that does is it moves it back over and notice it got rid of that yellow line let's see what that di did so that is the center div on the mobile platform So what I did is before it had clear, let me undo it so you can see what it does actually. 
So that moves it back over. So we have that, um, let's bring it back up in there. There's our center div. We have a clear none float left. When I click on that, and that is the center div, when I click on that to align it, it changes it to clear both float left. Whereas before it was clear none float left. So the same thing with the right. If I want that to move over, I want it to clear both because that will allow um, those two stack one on top of the other. So let's put in some footer content. And let's look at that in live. So now we've got that color. Uh, we've got the home there. And as long as I'm in live, it won't let me. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, let's go back to the live view. Let's look at this in the different. Let's take off the visual aid so we can see it. We've got the background of red, which is what it's supposed to be. We've got our H1. We've got our unordered list. We've got the left, center, and right that are stacking on top of each other. And it should look the same way for all three right now because all three of them are, um, and actually notice that those are uh, pumping out in the upper two. So let's go in and take a look at what's going on there. I'm going to turn on the, the visual cues back on. And let's go and look at... Tur Okay, see, and those are still uh, showing as floating out. And the reason that it does that is because when I am looking at it in the tablet or the full screen mode, those set of rules are being overridden because, again, we have, it was the center and the right in our mobile, in our cell phone, we have it cleared both and float left. However, in our tablet, we've got it clear blow, or uh, for the center, we got it clear none. So we've changed that rule because we were working on the mobile. It only changed the rule in the part of the style sheet that applies to mobile only. So now, when we come over here, we've got a chance to change the presentation with the same structure using the rules that are in place. So now let's go into the tablet version and, and let's change that as well. Click on the tablet version and I want to go back to my original design and I'm going to go to the 8 column and the way that I had that is the header on the top, the navigation across, all the way across, and then I had the left and center floating beside each other and the right on a page of its own. So we come back into here, and in this case, the only one I have to change is this one. I want that floating over there, and then these two should float beside each other. So when I go to my uh, live view here, you'll notice that that comes out, those stay in. But the problem is, the reason it's not floating up beside there is that the width of these is still set to eight columns. So in order for me to make this happen, what I've got to do is, let's turn off the live code. Um, this is the, the navigation. And I'm going to turn off that background color because it is making it hard to read this. So I'm just going to clear that out of there. And you notice it takes on the red, so I'm going to have to clear out the red too. And it did that because it was inheriting that from the cell phone size. So I'll clear that out. And then, of course, it has the green, uh, which is in the full size. And we will clear that out. just because that background color was making it too hard to read. So what I've got here is I've got my header, I've got my navigation, which are both supposed to cross eight columns. 
But then, if we go back to that prototype, the left and the right are only covering four columns. One, two, three, four. However, in my design, they are covering eight. So what I'm going to have to do on that left column is I'm going to have to reduce the size. And you'll notice I'm pulling it from the right-hand side there, not the left. Because what the right-hand side does is it changes the size, how many columns it takes up. If I was changing it from over here, it would change the positioning. And that's one of the things that you need to pick up if you're using uh, this version of Dreamweaver uh, by watching the videos because they'll go into details about that kind of thing. And then you'll notice when I got down to 4, it popped up there and beside it. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. I'm just going to add some uh, line breaks in here. I have to turn off the live view in order to change the content because I want to make it visible to you um, what's going on here. So now we've got the um, header, the navigation, the left, and the center floating beside each other, and the right is taking up the full width as it did in our prototype so that the right covers eight, the left and center cover four, and we have just successfully implemented the basic structural elements of that second level. So now let's go to the third level here, to the, the full screen, and uh, look at our prototype. And our prototype for the 12 column grid is three columns, left, center, and right floating beside each other. So then I come into Dreamweaver, and uh, you should start be getting a, the, the hang of this now. We need to reduce that down to four, because that's what it was in our prototype. And because those are already floating, they're going to pop up next to each other. Because when we first laid this out, we told them not to start on a new line. So we pop that one to four as well. And we end up with our three column layout. I'll give that a couple extra lines just to level it out there. Later on, we'll add a script. Uh, later in the semester to make it do that, but now we have the uh, the 12 column layout. So we have effectively, with only changing the CSS, we didn't change the source code at all or the HTML, and you can tell that because we've still got we've got an asterisk there. We don't have an asterisk there, so we've not changed other than adding those lines to make those look larger. We haven't not changed the HTML in this at all. The way that we created all three of those layouts is by assigning different sets of rules about the positioning dependent upon the size of the viewport. And that, in its essence, is the way that responsive design works. You have different sets of rules that apply presentation in different ways. Now, in future um, videos, we'll go into the different kinds of content, how you can manipulate the content, but this estab establishes your structural aspects of your website in a way that is going to respond so that whatever size viewport is available, uh, it's going to react to that. So let's go ahead and uh, do this. I'm going to save everything. And then I want to uh, preview this in a browser. And it doesn't like that I haven't added editable regions. As you recall, I made this into a template. Uh, and I haven't added editable regions yet. So we'll do that later on. Um, so we've got this responsible. Here is the thing. This is at the full screen. However, when I reduce my sizes down, you'll notice that. And let me just hide this other stuff from the background. OK, when I come to. Here's the full size. When we reduce it down, you'll notice that it's wrapping. But then when we hit that 768 pixel point, it drops this one down. And if you could see, if I had enough content in here, you'd see that this goes all the way across. And then these drop into two, uh, floating beside each other. As I narrow down, 
when I get to that 481 pixel point, it drops it down, and that is a responsive web design. So going back to the, um, the, the locations that we were at earlier, that's what's going on when you see, for instance, the Boston Globe site changing. So when we go back to the Boston Globe and we open it at full screen, there's got one look. And it is essentially a three column, four column down at the bottom here, but in most of it, it is a three column look. You've got one, two, three. Now here they've got, they've combined these two and made four within that. So that, there's a lot of flexibility in the way that you can do this. But for the most part, we're looking at a three column look, especially up here at the top. And as we narrow down, let's do that in a little bit smaller steps. Um, as we narrow down, the images get smaller, the columns get smaller, and then when we hit that breaking point, it goes from, which is probably about 768 pixels, it goes from three column to a two column approach. Oops, and I went two back, two up. And it dropped that ad that was over on the side down below. And here you've got a combination of two and four column layout. So here, that's that's why they did that four column uh, layout there because it works well with the two. So this is actually a four column layout only it's using uh, this one is using well it's actually eight. This one's using four, this one's using four, this one's using two, each of these are using t two and you can see the lines in the gutters between them. So that's uh, the flexibility that this brings and you can now see why uh, with a 12 column layout you can get pretty flexible but you can also see why people who wanted to do really complicated sites might switch to a 24 column layout or a 16 column layout uh, that that's not too critical um, you know you're, you're not tied into it the 12 is a good place to, to start and learn this stuff and that's what we'll be doing in this class so uh, that is your primer for responsive design uh, looking at the structural elements and the uh, uh, how to originally position them for your design. And then the next sections will go into dealing with the actual content of the pages as you move forward.